Hello YouTubers, so this is another intercom related video with the Bogan TAM2 or the TAMB2 telephone paging interface module. Now I recently got this for super cheap on eBay. Paid only like 19 bucks for this altogether and it was an auction from the Habitat Restore. Apparently they have their own they only have their own profile on eBay, so I'm glad to acquire this thing. And it works pretty good. So, yes, I kind of jimmy rigged a few things here. So, those two wires is what usually feeds the T and the R terminals on the UTI one. For right now, I just have the audio come straight out of here and then go back into the existing wire because I wanted to test this real quick. Now, when I got this, it came with everything. It came with the rack ears. It came with all of these green connector blocks, which they are called Phoenix connectors. Most of the listings on eBay usually don't include these. And not only that, but it came with the OEM power supply. For one of these brand new, it's like... These things with everything could go between a hundred bucks to three hundred bucks. I only paid nineteen for this, and I was a winner of that auction. So, so here's the audio coming out to there, and I'll probably you probably want to know what this thing sounds like. So, it is on FXS mode right now, or station mode. You can see it works as the, what the tone sounds like. That's what it sounds like. And then I'm going to show you all the dip switches because now, because I'm the first one to cover this kind of more in depth. There are some videos of these, but it's just people troubleshooting it or whatever, or those, I don't know, infomercial videos. But nothing like what I'm doing. So see all those dip switches? Take a screenshot or use or use this as your reference if you do acquire one of these. The only thing that may change in your scenario is the first set of dip switches here. Sw dip sw the, the, the first set of switches here. Number one. You could either be using trunk mode or station. Whatever one you have set up on your system. So right now I have it set up to station and it's just directly connected to the FXS card on the Cisco router. So now I'm going to go and change it to trunk mode. And I'm just going to swap this over and put it on the FXL. And then I'll dial it again. So it's now on like session 810. Let's see if it works. That is in trunk mode now, not station mode anymore. Test check. That's the only switch you really need to mess with. But the rest of these, they're the way I have them set up. Use the use it as your reference. And I'll probably put this back into station mode. Let me change that real quick. So that way. That way uh, in station mode. So we're going to go over the wiring here. This does have contact closures. Usually for my setup, and this is going to apply for many of your setups too. You're going to want to use the NO in the C terminal or the contact closures, kind of like the UTO one, pretty much the exact, exactly the same way. And then I just have a parallel across here to activate this relays in there to, that goes to the rest of the amplifiers. Your setup may vary, but chances are you're gonna use the NO and the C terminals. And then the page out. There is PT, PR, and ground slash S. 
Ignore the ground slash chest. You might most likely not need it for your sub. It's probably there for certain circumstances. But you're going to use the PT and the PR. PT is tip and PR is ring. Kind of like the T and the R terminals on the UTO one, if you're familiar with that interface. So, and I just have those greed wires going up to these two alligator clips going on to the orange wires that feed the page to this line mixer and which is amplified and outputted back to the rest of the system and then station slash trunk that's just your phone line that's your phone line that runs all the way back to a phone jack either if it's in station or trunk or FXO or FXS mode. Remember, station is FXS and trunk is FXO. If in the Cisco world with this. Now, for the page out, and I'll show you in the manual what Bogan specifies here. They recommend you using a WMT1A impedance matching transformer. And I've seen the prices for these things, and they're very expensive. So, I have a little life hack for you guys on the cheap side. <laughs> Get yourself a doorbell transformer. And this actually works pretty well. And, I, and matter of fact, that's what I have used on the system currently right now. So, to set this up, you're going to take these two green wires I have for page out here. You're going to run those lines to these two terminals. And then on the other end of this transformer, these two black wires. Most doorbell transformers will have a green wire and a white wire instead of the double black wires. Either the black, the single black and the white, or these double blacks. That is where you're going to put your RCA connector or go straight into the tail input on the back of your amplifier. This will match the impedance and it won't make your page sound all tinny and stuff. It'll actually give it a little more bass. This is good enough. That's my life hack for the bogey impedance matching transform is using this. Now if you do go to Home Depot, they do sell different sizes of these things or lows. So this one's this one is actually a 10 VA transformer. You want to try to find one that says 10 wired 10 VA transform, not 30, like it says here. Try to find one with 10. 30 is too overkill. 10 VA is good enough for the system. And believe it or not, and I saw the mystery too at the same time. Every single Safeway store in my area uses this. I'm not, I'm not joking. They use the same exact... All of them use, use this interface. And they always crank their bass and the volume very loud. So every time this thing disconnects, you can hear that pop kind of like how you heard it with this. Exactly the same way. So those of you that are at Safeway and you hear that tone, they use it. TAMB2. So, yeah, that is the video on this Bogan TAMB or the TAM2 paging interface.